okay, I can be anti-capitalist because I can see that the structure of capitalism leads to a huge amount of inequality and oppression and injustice. Okay, so I'm anti-capitalist. But what about if the capitalism is inside of me? You know, like what if it's in my instincts and my behaviors and my reflexes? So then am I against those parts of myself? And am I like waging some kind of struggle where um, one part of me is the good part and the other one's the bad part? Is that how that's supposed to go? And I think that is what's happening in, in most sort of, in what we think of as like social justice world, a lot of that is is what's happening is people are kind of subconsciously fighting with internal parts of themselves and consciously fighting with people, with other people outside of them. But there's this weird sort of dissonance and like, I think a lot of behavior that's happening that's not really, it's not really obviously visible that that's what's happening, but I think it's happening internally. And so metamodernism is kind of like, what happens if you see that capitalism is a problem, but you believe that capitalism is inside of you? or patriarchy or any other system of oppression. Like if you believe that, that these systems are not literally real, like there's not literally a physical structure called patriarchy that's out there somewhere and you can go with this literal sledgehammer and dismantle it. It doesn't have a physical place. Where does it live? It lives inside of us, like inside of all of our um, psychologies and our behaviors and our muscles, and our, um, some, but potentially even in our genes to some degree. Like a, an aggressive attempt to dismantle that it's not going to get you very far if you actually want to like, I mean, for myself, like if I want to come out of my patriarchal pattern, like punishing myself and shaming myself and telling myself that I'm a bad, you know, like what an asshole that I am. Like it doesn't actually get you very far. What gets somewhere is compassion and tenderness and curiosity and those sorts mm. of things. It's, it's like an emergent property. You know, like there's all these agents, independent agents doing stuff. And one of the emergent properties of that is that we have these systems of, of injustice and oppression. But there's not someone that's like, no one designed patriarchy and said, okay, we're going to do this now and get everyone to agree. And then they amassed all the power and made people do it, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah, I think it makes our reasoning a bit screwy if we treat it, yeah. if we treat it as an actual object or with, a, with yeah. a, a, a physical manifestation that we can go and just dismantle. So you've got like modernism being this project of science and progress and, you know, the triumph of reason and humans are here to dominate the planet and we're going to go and do civilization until we've covered the whole place and then we're going to take over the solar system. And, you know, there's this kind of positive story of progress. And then postmodernism comes along and says, actually, what you call progress from a different perspective would be called colonization. And it's only good for the people that are in a specific standpoint. If you take a different standpoint, you realize that actually it's not progress, it's negative, it has all of these, it's doing all these harms, it's harming the planet, it's harming all these other peoples, like what's happening in, in your pursuit of progress is a loss of diversity, etc., etc. I, I see postmodernism as basically a, a criticism of modernism, just saying like, look, all the stuff that you call progress, is, it's not actually positive and it's not actually true. You know, like a lot of the things that you call science, they're not actually science. You know, that I really love this. Um, I saw a, a photo from an old, I think it was like a, a feminist protest in the 60s or 70s or something. And that the sign said, objectivity is just male subjectivity. <laughs> and I really love that concept. You know, it's like you think that you're being objective, but actually it's just a whole bunch of men who have taken their subjectivity and pretended like it's like it's perfect and it's and it's natural, you know, and that it's this kind of like manifest out of the universal laws or something like that. So there's that really useful criticism, and I think we absolutely need postmodernism. We need to be able to say like that the people who have been doing the science or making this kind of progress or having these philosophies or like calling the shots about what societies look like, like they have their subjectivity and they've been trying to pretend like they don't and pretend that they are kind of godlike objective actors, but they're not. And if we listen to all the other people who haven't been considered, then we realize that things that we thought were progress were not. I think that's like crucial, both from the humanistic perspective and also from the perspective of ecology and just like what's happening to the physical planet. Like that's really important. But I think postmodernism is, it's a criticism, it's not a construction. Like you can't really do much with it. All you can do is like continuously dismantle hierarchies. When I talk about like the social justice movement, I think social justice in general, as we know it at the moment, is very, has a very strong overlap with postmodernism. That it's all about criticism and it's about looking at power and looking about who's not being heard and trying to disintegrate these hierarchies. But that's all it knows how to do. And so like the reason we have this thing called cancel culture that people are worried about is because once you start making progress on dismantling a hierarchy, then you form a movement and then you like you look at the leaderful people, the powerful people within the movement and you go like, oh, we need to dismantle them too. And it's just like this endless process of deconstruction. 
but it's pretty hard. It's pretty rare to hear like a constructive prescription of like, oh, this is how school should be. You know, this is what justice should look like. You know, like you, at the moment, right? Like, what are we hearing? We're hearing defund the police, but we're not hearing much about like what transformative justice actually looks like. I know there are people doing that work. I don't want to disrespect the work they're doing. I just mean like, what are the sort of memes that are being produced? What are the the, the loudest notes that are being played at the moment? And they're deconstructive rather than constructive. And so then meta modernism is this claim or this is an, an attempt. And I think it's very, it's very fresh and it's really new. And I don't think it's like very solid, but I, I like the idea and it, and it attracts me. It's this idea that yes, postmodernism is good, but it's not the end of the story. Like we can keep going. We've had modernism and we appreciate that there's something called science and progress. Like I'm quite happy that I'm talking to you right now on a yeah, internet connection sick. that spans the globe. And I think that's the, that's the result of modernism that did that, you know? And I'm glad that we've got postmodernism that we can have these interesting debates about how how unjust and how damaging it is that this internet has been produced in unfair conditions. And I want to keep going. I want to explore new territory with you. I know I want to go to a place that we haven't thought of yet, where we start to think about how would we construct a society that's actually good for all of the beings on the planet and, and produces more freedom and more, more belonging and more, you know, all that good stuff. And that's, um, that question is kind of the territory of metamodernism. It's saying like, can we, can we keep going beyond postmodernism? And I think like the part that I, I'm attracted to is yes there's this criticism of power and it's it's merged with a real deep commitment to adult development meaning people are complex creatures and with the right conditions they can grow and change so for instance if, if we're interested in say sexism there was a point where it was brought to my attention by a lot of feminists that like hey some of your behavior rich is a problem you know like that the way that you show up in a conversation, uh, the way that you put your ideas or the way you listen or don't listen, like this is a manifestation of a thing called patriarchy and it's a problem. And the meta modern take on that is like, so what is it about me and inside of me that is that has got these reflexes and these behaviors that are causing a problem? And then like, how would we actually change those behaviors in me? And what I hope at least is that it treats me as an important, dignified human subject who is worthy of some attention and some compassion and says, Rich, you know, how are we going to help you change your behavior? And like I said, it's like uh, compassion and tenderness and curiosity is what does it. It's like having, having spaces for vulnerability and honesty and all that sort of stuff. Like that's where, that's where my behavior change comes from. And potentially if we had a critical mass of people doing that, then we're sort of like removing the fuel for the fire, if you like. It's sort of like changing the conditions so that the emergent property of this oppressive system equal patriarchy is much less dominant than it, than it has been. Mm-hmm.